This is a Momentum Media production. Have you thought about growing your wealth but don't know how to start? Talk to Invest by Metricon. They make property investing easy. Property investing education, insights and strategy. Plus, with their rent-ready packages, your tenants can move in from the day you get the keys. Invest by Metricon. Build wealth. Build today. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Hi okay, everyone. Hey guys, Phil Tarrant here. I'm host of the Smart Property Investment Show. I hope you're well. I uh, hope you're sort of emerging out of lockdown. It's now literally recording this in uh, New South Wales and uh, we are about a month away from the state government allowing us uh, back out. Already there's some uh, restrictions lifting, particularly those LGAs and that suburbs have been locked up more than other parts of New South Wales. We're now allowed to go outside and exercise and uh, as long as we want and have picnic with friends. And uh, there's a picnic frenzy at the moment. I went out on the weekend and, and uh, I've seen parks full, never like it before. So uh, it looks like everyone is ready to rock and roll once the middle, mid to late October happens and uh, we hit this magical 70% vaccination rate which we're working towards. And what's going to happen with property markets at that point in time, who knows? Uh, obviously, we'll be keeping across it with commentary on smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Keep connected. Go and check it out. Have a look. Uh, or social media, Smart Property HQ is where you'll find us. But there is a whole bunch of property investors out there itching, ready to get there, looking, open homes, attending auctions, real estate back to normal. And I think you're going to see a firing property market for at least uh, the next six months or up until... We get to a federal election, which I think is going to be happening in uh, May is my read at the moment, what I'm hearing. So whether or not that puts the brakes on property, who knows? So we've got plenty of time to talk about that. But smart property investment, what we like to do mainly here, and what I get a lot of satisfaction out of is having conversations with property investors, uh, particularly young property investors who don't subscribe to the whole idea of it's impossible to get in the property in Australia and only rich people can invest in property and it's so unfair and it's so unaffordable because we've had a, a whole bunch of younger investors on the show recently and uh, by and large they're all saying property is affordable. Yes, you can get in the property. Yes, you need to make some sacrifices. But um, if you want to start building wealth early, because I tell you what, you want to have and be in property for as long as possible because that's how you're going to get the biggest upsides. Join him in the studio, Daniel Douglas. I think a young property investor. I'm not going to age you, Daniel. How are you going? Where are you mm-hmm. recording from? You're I'm up? good. Um, yes, I'm in lockdown in that Western Sydney area that you were talking about. Ah, okay. um, yeah, thank you for having me on today. And That's yes, good. I am young property investor. Just gotten into the market about a month ago. Oh, okay. All right. Well, so so you've got one investment property, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Investment. That's good. That helps me frame the conversation. So have you been one of these? Uh, well-behaved lockdown, LGA lockdown, Western suburbs type people. And I'm, I'm happy to talk about Western suburbs. I'm Westy, <laughs> born and bred, Black Town, 2148. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm more of a Seven Hills guy, by the way, but um, uh, right next door. But uh, have you been behaving yourself? You've been uh, or, or curfew yes. breaking? No, definitely behaving myself. I've been very busy at home working and sorting out my new property yeah, just eager to to get out and get even it. to be able to travel to Perth and, and see my new place. Okay, so it's in Perth. All right, well, we'll get to property in a moment. Um, so in order to, sorry, how old are you, Danielle? I'm 23. Okay, so pretty young property investor. So no doubt being able to invest in property means that you can get a mortgage, which means that you have a steady job. What do you do for a living? I work in a complaints for a stockbroker. Okay. So like I, <laughs> yes, it, it can be a challenge at times, um, but definitely as soon as I got out of uni, I went straight into working, um, just doing client services as a lot of, I think, young business graduates do, um, working on the phones and just made, tried to save. And especially being in a, a stockbroking environment, I was exposed to a lot of investing. So from um, from kind of getting out of uni, I always knew that I wanted to start building my wealth in terms of investing in stocks and investing in property. That's pretty cool. So you're quite fortunate that you're actually in an environment where you're learning about different types of asset classes and the fundamentals of investing and whether or not you want to dabble um in, in the stock market, uh, it's it's your call. Um, it's good that you're starting to diversify with some property assets. Well, we had a, a young investor on uh, probably a month ago. Go and check it out, Jake Whitlock, who I think by memory dusted about 50k 
investing in in the stock market and not just sort of you know he wasn't just buying you know mum and dad sort of bank stocks he was messing around with some hybrids and all this all this sort of stuff and he, he got burned um i bet he reckons it was the most valuable lesson he's ever had um <laughs> but working inside a complaints in in a stockbroking so it's just like a stockbroking trading platform type of thing is it yeah, yeah. okay yeah. what what do most people complain about uh, when it comes to the stocks, why they've gone down or they whinge about other things saying, oh, my my buy or sell order didn't go through at the right time, you owe me money, that sort of stuff? Yeah, you get a little bit of that. Um, but uh, I think, so yeah, you do get a little bit of that. Um, but, yeah, it's people aren't expecting for the market to go down, and especially over COVID. We've seen a lot of big market movements um, in in the stock market. So a lot of people have had great wins over that and great losses and, yeah, yeah get people that are not happy when they lose a bit of money. Well, and this is, guess what, if you do uh, involve yourself in a stock market, you, you do win and you do lose. Only yesterday, I think the stock market, the market went down 2% on the back of um, a potential collapse of a big Chinese property developer, which... Uh, there's a lot of red in the market yesterday. I was checking it out. I haven't looked today, so anyway, I try not to look at it every day. But I do also uh, invest in shares, um, but primarily I have a lot of my assets sitting inside. Probably, what have you most learned from operating inside a stock market trading environment? Nothing is guaranteed. Number one, number two, you got to expect to lose money. Um, yeah. What else? What would be your sort of tip for for the young punters out there when it comes to investing in shares? Well, definitely knowing your risk, uh, your risk profile is um, a good place to start off with. I don't like risk, so I went for a lot of the mum and dad stocks and where I found with that, I I was trying to wait for the right time a lot of the time, but I've kind of learned to just go for it. When you have like even $500 set aside, you can pick a banking stock, pick any any stock that you've done a little bit of research on and just go for it because then you look back six months later when you haven't gone for that opportunity and you're like wow I've, I've lost out on quite a bit of money there um so with with the um kind of the higher value blue chip stocks I've learned to just kind of go for it when I've got the money and then I've made about 28 percent on my portfolio from investing over the past couple of years. Okay. A lot of that is due to picking the right time just after COVID hit when the market went down significantly. I chose some travel stocks and, and stocks that were impacted by that and that has paid off really well. What travel stock did you buy? Like Hello World or? Um, <laughs> no, I bought Qantas. You, know? oh, you bought Qantas. Yeah, I, got, I, bought, I bought some Qantas recently. I wish I'd got it back when it went, went down to two bucks something by memory. Yeah, um, I can't remember exactly where I got it at, but I know it's I've probably gone up about sixty percent from when I bought it just after COVID. I so really, so, so, so did you start that. investing in in shares because that was the environment you're operating within? No doubt you're surrounded by a whole bunch of other people. You're in a business that does that for a living. Probably thinking you're getting good information when you're probably <laughs> not. Everyone talks about it. Everyone's got a hot mm. tip. I guess you know working in that environment makes sense to probably have a bit of a, a, a play yourself, but but why stocks first over property? Well, I chose stocks first because I didn't have as much money saved up. Um, so I started off by investing $500 and the next time I did about $1,000. So of course, it's nowhere near what you need for a house deposit. So I started off with that. Once I got kind of the size of the portfolio that I wanted, um, I started to save for the deposit for the investment property. And now I feel a bit more secure having the investment property with my stock portfolio as well. Because if anything were to happen where I couldn't pay for my mortgage or something, if something went wrong, I have the little bit of money set aside in my stocks that I can sell down and use that as cash. Did you have to uh, liquidate any of your uh, stock portfolio in order to raise a deposit for buying an investment property? No, no, I didn't liquidate any of that. I how really want. How did you that manage that? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's impressive. So, well, let, let's get in the property uh, quickly because then we can sort of revert back to the stock stuff. We'll just go to a break beforehand. Stay with us. Back in a moment. Are you wondering where to buy an investment property right now? Why not let buyers buyers take the guesswork out of it? We can find you the right place on or off market at the right price. An investment professional from our national network of buyers agents can help you save time, money, and stress and deliver you a tailored solution. 
talk to us today. Call 1-800-975-051 or visit buyersbuyers.com.au. Welcome back, everyone. It's Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show. I'm with a property investor and already diversifying a portfolio at a very young age of 23, which is pretty impressive. So you've bought a property in Perth. All right, let's let's chat about the property itself. Uh, what did you buy? Yeah, I bought a three-bedroom, one-bathroom um, house near uh, in Moranda, so kind of near the water, which is nice, and and near some shopping centres and stuff. I got it for two hundred and five thousand off market. Okay. So what I would call a little bit of a bargain there, um, but that's kind of what you get when you work with really good people that have have good exposure to to the investment property world and so two hundred and five thousand dollars for a three bedroom house one bathroom where, where was the suburb mm-hmm. sorry Marunda Marunda where's Marunda uh south of Perth about like 40 minutes oh, okay of Perth. yeah yeah okay I think it's the the last yeah. stop on the train line <laughs> yep yep yeah no I know it is on the way down to Margaret River Two hundred five thousand bucks. Did you think that you could buy property for that price in Australia? Houses? No, I did not. <laughs> I kind of went in and built my deposit, thinking that I would get maybe like three hundred and fifty thousand if I was lucky, kind of on that lower end. But I was shocked that I could get one at two hundred five thousand. It does need a little bit of work, which we're currently doing at the moment: new, new flooring, new paint, um, potentially new kitchen as well. Okay. Um, but uh, the because I got it for two hundred five thousand, I can see that there'll be good growth there over time. So you obviously had support. Excuse me, did you use a buyer's agent? Did you? Yes, I used a, a buyer's agent, um, and they got me connected with mortgage brokers and and all of that. Especially coming in with not too much knowledge about the investment property market mm. myself, it was really valuable for, for me to work with people. And just knowing that that support is out there for young people like me is really fantastic. I just made sure I, I asked a lot of questions and everyone was really knowledgeable. So what was the inflection point to actually um, use a professional to help you buy property rather than try and do it? I knew that it was something that I was unfamiliar with. And it would be a lot of work and time to really, truly understand everything about buying a property. I knew I would be able to do it right if I did it with um, some professionals. Mm. Do you think $200,000 is a lot of money? It, it is a lot of money, but not in the grand scheme of what a house <laughs> is, is in, like, Sydney yeah. or... Um, I know kind of big cost now, but it will be a big reward in the future. So so you're doing some work on it right now, so you're not renting it out. What, what do you think it will rent for when it's ready to be rented? Well, yep. So initially we thought it was going to be about 270 to 300, but yep. with the works that I'm doing, um, especially redoing the kitchen, we're looking at about 345. So it will be positively geared. Good. And sort of any positivity in this, is this going to go to buying stuff online or are you going to chuck that into a deposit for another property? What's the game plan from here on in? Definitely not buying <laughs> stuff online. I, I had to make a lot of sacrifices to get here and make really, really smart investments, uh, or not smart spending decisions. Um, so from here, we'll put that in my savings account, start yeah. or into more stocks, start saving up for the next deposit. I don't have a exact plan whether it's going to be a set a second investment property or a residential property. I just wanted to pull the trigger, get into the market and get my footing so I had options in the future to work out where I wanted to go. So 205 grand, um, did you borrow 80% or 90% of the purchase price? Only I had a deposit of 15%. Okay, so, so 15%. So did you have to pay... Uh, LMI, Lenders Mortgage Insurance. Yep. Yes, it was about a grand in there. Okay. So a thousand bucks in Lenders Mortgage Insurance and LMI. So what that is for those of you that don't know is essentially it. Uh, it's an insurance policy uh, held by uh, the lender against you. Should you default on the property, it means they're going to get their money back or at least they sell it off and get repaid. So that doesn't insure your property. It's, it's a cost to play, but it means that you can get into the market a lot earlier. And, you know, to uh, Daniel's point here, 5% earlier so 15 percent deposit uh, and no doubt you've already sort of made that money back so ha- what was the total amount of your deposit uh how much money did you need plus your buyer's agency fee 
plus stamp duty plus legal fees all that sort of stuff it did it did accumulate so um we went for about thirty five thousand deposit okay to work with the buyer's agent and all the kind of associated legal fees and all that That's an extra i'd say 10 to 15 grand yep um and then probably another 15 grand we're spending in renovations but that's kind of i'm using income as i get from work to pay for the renovations okay um, over time so so the total amount of money that you needed to to uh, secure this property was about 35 grand was it in uh, a bit more but you get like six, uh, 60 000 or 70 000. okay okay well that's a lot of money to 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 save how did you manage that did you just squirrel money away or uh any help from your parents i did get a little bit of help from my parents but look i i actually went in expecting to have to use a lot of my parents money um maybe about 20 grand or something but actually i'm tending to be able to actually pay everything on my own without needing to use those funds so i haven't haven't needed to touch that yet but i might need to in the future um, but of course, there's there could be stuff that I could forego in yeah. terms of the renovations to do that. Um, but in terms of spending, I I think very carefully about everything that I purchase, and I don't purchase a lot of stuff just frivolously. Um, there's always been occasions where a lot of my peers have been buying new cars every few years, or um, going on lots of holidays and spending a lot of money, or but going staying nights in five star hotels, I met, I forgo, I I chose not to take that route and put that money away, so I could enjoy those things later on once I've had a, a strong financial base with the property and the stocks. And it's, it's a good way to be delayed gratification, and uh, I'm quite interested in what you're piercing about it. But with the um sort of support for your parents have you got like a, a side agreement there that uh, you got to pay them back at some point in time or is this a hey look we want to help you on your way this is your bit but from here and in you're on your own and you see a lot of parents do that uh, a whole bunch of ways you can frame it what you can also do if, if, if your parents don't have cash they can also sort of co-guarantor on the loan um, and that can help you get into the market earlier uh, did you got to give the money back or is it just a there you go yeah I'll, I'll give the money back I've got the uh, bank of parents and um, have a zero percent loan, um, and yeah, just keeping track of all that will pay it as That's I cool. um, get some money. Did they make you sign an agreement, or was it just a handshake agreement? Just handshake. <laughs> <laughs> and you sort of spoke about your peer group. Um, uh, you know, to, to my earlier comment, there's a lot of younger Australians uh, lament on how it's impossible to buy a property. You cannot get a property. It's unfair. Uh, the generation above them has got all the advantages of it, never going to be able to in Australia. I, I think you're showing and we have these conversations a lot. That, that's not the case. $200,000, um, uh, I would say, is probably within the realms of most Australian workers should they choose to be focused on how they go about spending the money and saving Definitely. money. Well, does your peer group sort of know what you're up to? Are they going, why are you buying property for? That's crazy and it's in Perth. You can't even go there. You're mad. You should be spending it on whatever young people spend their money on right now. Yeah, I I think it was a shock because it's not something that you really think that you can do, especially I'm a young single income woman. I'm not the demographic that um, is kind of investment property is talked about or marketed to. So I think it, it's a shock, but I've really used this as a point to discuss these types of things with my friends to be like, you can buy stocks, you can buy a property, and I can give you a, a hand with some of the knowledge that that I've learned over time. Um, because it's a really powerful position to be in, and I want people like me to be empowered to um, to get into financial markets like this. Yeah, and, and one of the sort of major first steps for people to start on an investment journey is, is positive mindset, and you can shape your mindset through uh, education, um, and we're very fortunate now. There's a whole bunch of different ways, uh, you know, it democratised uh, investment information these days. Anywhere you look, you're going to, uh, see stuff that's going to be telling you what to do that therein has its own problems we'll go to another quick break when we come back we'll get into that uh, stay with us back in a moment the mark of financial success isn't about getting bigger better faster or more to paul success is freedom freedom to spend more time with his family or giving back to his community or just more time to go surfing paul glossop an award-winning property buyer and regular guest on the smart property investment podcast 
has taken the lessons he's learned building a multi-million dollar property portfolio and laid them out in his best-selling book, A Surfer's Guide to Property Investing. For a limited time, get your free copy of Paul's award-winning book and receive a roadmap for building both lifestyle and wealth through property investing. Grab your free copy today at purepropertyinvestment.com. Welcome back, everyone. Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show with Daniel Douglas, talking through educating the next generation of property investors. And you know, to the point that you're uh, fortunate that you work inside an investing environment with other property, well, there's some other investors who are investing in, in, in stocks and shares, uh, expand your awareness. Do, do you think there's enough education? Like if you think back to your schooling, is there enough education to teach young kids about money? And, and whose responsibility do you think that is? A bit philosophical, but it's important. Yeah, I, I don't think it was really discussed a lot in my school. Um, it was something that I learned because I've got family that are in investment property, um, but I it, it wasn't something that, that came up. I know because I did business, it was kind of a lot of stocks or um, other bonds or exchange that was kind of discussed where property was kind of left out. I, I was blessed by having family in the area, but kind of in age of social media there is a lot more access to um to people that are knowledgeable about investment property the people that want people like you to get into the market as well and I think that's that's a really good first step and having um having social media which does talk about young people investing really makes it easier for young people to to start to consider it as an idea rather than it just being a, a thing that old rich people do. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, this goes to the point around um, information is so much more accessible, but if, if you choose to consume all of your information, which helps change the shape or frame the way you think about stuff, if you get it all from social media, often it can be quite follow because uh, the, the the way social media works, it feeds you stuff mm-hmm. which it thinks that you're interested in. And I've seen more, I've seen just as much negative information about property on social media or the wrong information on social media around property as what there is positive um, and yeah. uh, um, information um, around it. And, you know, you only need to look at some people's social media feeds and you just wonder what they're doing or, or how they're seeing the world. But, um, you know, it's definitely you, a good... It's definitely a good starting point to consider the idea and then you can get your research from elsewhere or work with professionals. But to plant the seed, I think it's a really good thing. So as a percentage, what um, of your peer group, what percentage of would think that getting into the Australian property market is possible? I don't think a, a high percent as well. I think out of my friend groups, I've got one other friend that's considering getting into the into the market, but even then thinking more about residential. Um, a lot of people focus on having a home for themselves, which is great, and saving up for that point. But there is st- steps that you can do before that that can set you up for getting a really good home, like buying the investment property. Um, but it's, it's not really seen as an option. Mm. And is that the strategy for you to try and leverage um, this first investment, maybe have another investment at a point in time to to um, propel you into buying a, a principal? Is that part of the strategy or are you going, well, I've got time on my side, I'll work that out when I get there? Yeah, I've definitely got the, the time on my side. I can work out my options when I get there. Um, yeah, just having that strong base was really important to me. Mm. Did you find uh, investing in your first property uh, I know you had people supporting you had a buyer's agent etc did you find it stressful was it was it something that really concerned you what sort of was it was it more of a scared of the the outcome or trying to find the courage to go about doing it how did you frame that I think finding the courage was a challenge and you're going out into the unknown it's something that I had never done before or new investors would have never done before Um, and I didn't have much knowledge to back me up as part of it, um, I took the leap of faith and by working with professionals and 
lots of Google and talking to people that I know have been in the market, I was able to gain knowledge to feel a bit more supportive. But it, it was an it was a hard experience. There's a lot of new things that you come across that you don't really understand. I had to ask so many questions about lots of little things, um, but that's all paid off and everyone's been really willing to help me and I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that you can work with um, that will really assist on, on, on that journey. So it sounds like a positive experience. Are you still working through the renovation stuff? How are you managing that um, uh, on the other side of Australia? Is that... Uh... A straightforward exercise um it can be a little complicated there's lots of emails and lots of back and forth um but i've been working with my advisor agent and um the property manager who's who have been organizing with people to come do quotes and and do the work and so then the i get the invoice actually, at the end <laughs> so the buyer's agent's actually helping you with that bit as well yeah okay oh, yeah that's, that's uh that's uh handy would you do anything different like you still that need to get the place rented right so there's still uh maybe some some learnings along the way but to get to this point uh what would you change starting earlier maybe <laughs> yeah yeah maybe starting earlier i don't think i would really change anything mm. um i i i'm really happy with the experience um I think maybe coming in with a bit more knowledge of the exact process of all the people that you need to talk to uh, when buying a property, like the mortgage brokers, the conveyances, the depreciation, um, schedule people, all that. There's a lot of people involved and I wasn't really ready to have such a long list of things I needed to do. Um, so it would be good to have known that before coming in rather than it being such a shock once I, I signed the dotted line to... to um, to purchase the property, I was had a little bit of a shock. Like, wow, this is a lot of work. But besides that, everything's gone pretty well. Where were, where were you when you signed? Did you make a big deal out of signing the the contract of of sale? Was it like a was it a big event? Did you take a photo of it? <laughs> yeah, um, it you was, have to. You got to remember that you got to mark yeah. these occasions. Yeah, yeah, you got to pop the champagne and have a little party, a lockdown yeah. party. <laughs> <laughs> No, and and uh, it's cool. In terms of the mortgage, so you use the mortgage broker, which is a really positive mm -hmm. way. And and the, the good thing is, is that where you are right now is probably the easiest it's ever going to be for you to secure finance because you have a full time job. You payg, you get a pay slip. You don't have complicated. Uh, you haven't complicated your life yet with a whole bunch of the other stuff, which makes financing difficult. So enjoy the moment. Uh, <laughs> and I would, I would imagine that you would have. Um, I don't know what you earn, but you would have um, a degree of serviceability, which would make a bank uh, comfortable. What sort of, what sort of mortgage did you get? Was it interest only? Was it principal and interest? Um, yeah. Tell us about it. Um, for about three years, I think. The rate at the moment is just over 3%. Okay. Um, I just made my first payment, um, which is exciting. Um, how, how much was your first payment? It was $450. Okay. So it's only 400 were only, only 450 bucks for, for one whole month, or is that fortnightly yeah. a month? One and, month. And, and you're going to be getting $345 uh, a week in your rent. So you yeah, start doing the mass and, and, and you, you should, you know, the, you should be fine unless there's some huge expenses that you don't know. Did you uh, did you fix the rate or did you do a variable? Variable. Okay. Uh, have you got an offset? Did you get an offset associated with it, offset account? So with the bank that I'm using, they don't mm. have an official offset account, but okay. they do have a kind of side bank account which you can use to deposit money into that acts like, a, like an uh, offset. An account. offset. And, and what an offset yeah. does. If you owe the bank $100,000 and then if you put $100,000 into an offset account, as in cash, it means that you don't pay any interest. It's pretty much what it is. So it can be a tactic. Uh, if you're doing 3.7% um, uh, on your mortgage, it means that you're getting that saving. Whereas you might go, well, I'd, I'd much rather get my 26, 27% uplift uh, by chucking that money into uh, into the stock market. And uh, that's a much better outcome, but you get to make those decisions moving forward. It's mm -hmm. cool. So when are we going to chat again? Danny Owen's going to be the next purchase. What's the game plan? How long is it going to take you to, to stump up another deposit? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a couple of years time, but. Yeah. Is, um, is the, the bank of mum and dad officially closed or can you draw down on that any further? I you think get so. One go, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's it. And are you going to try. I and won't need to. So, so is there any, are you going to try and pay them back as quickly as you can or are you just going to let it sit there and 
And is there any expectations around it? Definitely. I definitely want to do as much of this myself as I could. Um, I think at the moment the balance is about $6,000, which I could easily pay now. Um, But I'm trying to uh, use as much of my own money as possible because it is quite an accomplishment to um, say that you've bought your own house and done it mostly yourself. Um, Like I I paid the deposit all myself. Um, But, yeah. Bank like of mum and dad's closed and will pay off as quickly as possible. Well, it's it's pretty common uh, these days now, and I chat with a lot of investors to actually th- just that one small step into the market. Um, it's largely all that's required because if you do it the right way, you invest in the right place for the right reason, and you're getting capital growth and uplift, and you do have a job. Uh, often parents only need that just that one time, just to give that small mm-hmm. step up. That's why we call it stepping on the property ladder. Um, and 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 parents, if you're tuning into this or you've been asked to listen to this by uh, one of your kids about, hey, can you help me get going? Uh, highly. Um, uh, valuable exercise and uh, there's options available to you to help your kids do that might not necessarily be uh, money but you can uh, guarantee a uh, go guarantor on the loan so if uh, your child does default essentially they come after you so you're going to be able to pony out the money and you can even put your um, property in there as well as collateral um, which sometimes banks will ask for but a really good mortgage broker will be able to to run you through all those things my only recommendation would be if you're going to do it absolutely get going at it. it's a great way to help your kids out um, but just make sure you have pretty clear understandings uh, around that money and how you're structuring it and what is it. And, and even a written contract um, uh, can be beneficial if there is any discussions or debate around it. But anyway, have a look at it. Daniel, thanks so much for your time today. That's really cool. Um, well done. Congratulations. Good to see you um, uh, on the ladder. Uh, and the magic number there is well, 205 grand plus. You're probably going to drop, what, I reckon, 15, 20 grand on your renos. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But that that should pay itself off in the future anyway. Yeah, very good. And uh, and hopefully an area which should grow in value. Did, do you think you got that property under market value at 205 yes. grand? Yeah. Yeah, I think the last time it was sold, it was like 265. Oh, crazy. Um, so, it's, so it's dropped quite a bit and well under the rebuild cost. Okay, so so you've won, but obviously someone's lost uh, there, and, and this is this is the uh, the trials and tribulations investing in property. Thankfully, if you're listening to this particular podcast, you're not going to be one of those losers. You're going to be one of the winners. But uh, thanks for your time today, Daniel. Let's get you back on when you buy your next purchase. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice one, uh, that's Daniel Douglas, young property investor. You can do it. Uh, her story is just one of many uh, that we'd like to share on the Smart Property Investment Show. Uh, remember, if you want to keep connected, what's going on? Are you still down this pathway to actually understand property? There's plenty of information. There's now hundreds. Uh, I don't even know how many there is now, but hundreds of these podcasts of me chatting with investors and people involved in property. Uh, that's a really good place to start your education. Any questions at all, you can get in touch with the team here. Editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Smartpropertyinvestment.com.au for daily news around property, whether it's data or otherwise um, musings about what's going on. Uh, we also highlight the Smart Property Investment podcast, uh, sorry, the Smart Property Investment uh, portfolio there. You can see what we're doing. We've had some pretty good uh, uplift on that particular portfolio, um, nearing sort of 9 million bucks in, in value now. Uh, and that's been rocketing along. So we're pretty happy with that. Uh, social media, Smart Property HQ is where you'll find us. We'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. In the property investment industry, there's countless stories of the one that got away. And it's always the same reason. To pay the deposit, they needed the settlement from another property to come through, and they waited. Realty Assist Australia knows that when you find the one, waiting isn't an option. That's why they have a same-day settlement fund advance service. There's no credit check, no application fees, just a single one-off fee to advance your equity. Visit realtyassist.com.au slash settlements now.